Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. Well, I have a special treat for my subscribers today. I am celebrating my fifth year on YouTube. And I have with me my brother, James Tavlin. Great to have you here, Jim. And he is an artist in his own right, and he's done a lot of wonderful paintings. And especially today, he's going to talk about a painting about the end times called Apocalypse Today. So, Jim, take it away. It's all yours. Thank you. Several years ago, when Andre Serrano did his sculpture for the Brooklyn Museum of Christ on the Cross submerged in a vial of urine, I was prompted to react in the opposite direction. Previously I had done landscapes and portraits, still life paintings, but then I decided to do religious work. And behind me is one of the largest paintings I've ever done and it's called Apocalypse Today. And so in the winter of about 10 years ago, I started this painting and it took me the entire winter to do. And I want you to know that I was very much inspired and I went to work every day and Christ had my hands. So let's look at this painting and I'll try to tell you what was in my mind and I hope you'll understand it also. In this painting, you'll, we will start with the background, the far upper parts. It is divided into four separate sections, but the back part is divided up into several buildings which at the end of the world will be destroyed. Man's creations will, be, will fall down. And it's divided up into, as I said, four sections, and there is a moon in each one, and that color inside the moon represents the colors that are in the background of the four sections. Now we come down further and I have the four separate races. First the uh, Native American, the next the white Caucasian male, the African, and the Asian. In the last segment you see Christ on the cross and he is dying for our sins, for all these sins. He is our Savior. Now if we proceed further down, the title of this painting is, as I said earlier, Apocalypse Today. And the Apocalypse always pertains to the four horsemen of the Apocalypse. I decided to make it more modern by putting females on the horses and nude. Uh, and each one of these, the black horse, which indicates famine, the white horse, which indicates pestilence, the red horse, which indicates war, and the last horse, the gray horse or pale horse, indicates death. Albrecht Dürer is also one of the great paint painters and etchers, and you probably might be more familiar with that particular piece of work. Very well done, beautiful piece. At the bottom, we have a perspective going up. The floor is meant to look like a tile and leads up actually to these people here. And here are the seven, what I consider, mo modern deadly sins. Let's start with the first one. The first one is abortion. The second one is pedophilia. The third one is pornography. The fourth one is Satanism. The fifth one is homosexuality. The sixth one is feminism. And the last one is paganism. Let me explain what each one of these is doing. They are vomiting their sin into separate seven, seven, uh, different vials and in these vials represents their sin they're vomiting their sin in this you see an aborted child with blood in this one you see a child which is crying because of what this man has done to her or him 
In this one, you have pornography, and we have a female that is being submerged in water and actually dying. In this one, you have Satanism, and in it you see Satan and all his horrible ugliness with a tail and, and horns, etc. In this one, you have homosexuality, and you see two males bonding uh, uh, and, and showing their sin in their acts. In the last one, or the next to the last one, feminism, which shows a female lifting weights and not and trying to be more like a man than a woman. Feminism, I consider one of the deadliest sins of this century. Don't be confused with equality, because I believe total equality for everyone on the earth. And feminism is not the same as equality. And the last one is uh, paganism, and I symbolize that with body piercings. And in the bottom, the person has a necklace, and into the vial is a crystal. So that sums up the painting. Then the four sections are divided, as you can see, with the races. The first race is the Native American. And you'll notice that it is a blue background because I thought it would make the figure stand out the face. And uh, I made him very a noble person. Uh, but in all of these, there is an earthquake crack, which indicates that no matter what race you are, you're going to be affected by Armageddon, the end. The next part here is what I considered uh, the white man, the Caucasian. And he kind of is a, a salesman-like person, like Willie Loman. Uh, but again, also the crack going down through, okay? The third race is the African race, and it's from an, an African photograph. And these are the, the uh, headdresses and the beads. And then the last of the four races is the Asian, or the Geisha. And I wanted those to be all shown. In all cases, I tried to connect this section with them by having their outfits go down into this section. It was just the beads going down into here. In this particular one, it's just his, his boutonniere, and in here the hair goes down. It was meant to tie in the top part of the painting with the middle section of the painting. And I saw that the lamb had opened one of the seven seals. And I heard one of the four living creatures, as it were, the voice of thunder, saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow, and there was a crown given him. And he went forth conquering that he might conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And to him that sat thereon, it was given that he should take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and a great sword was given to him. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, Come and see. And behold, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard, as it were, a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, Two pounds of wheat for a penny, and thrice two pounds of barley for a penny, and see, thou hurt not the wine and the oil. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. And behold, a pale horse, and he that sat upon him, his name was Death, and hell followed him. And power was given to him over the four parts of the earth to kill with sword, with famine, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Okay, Brother James, that was really very interesting. I thought it was great. And now, if my audience would like to uh, find more examples of your work, how can they do that? They can go to tapart.net.
and you will see at least 50 or 60 of my paintings and drawings. Thank Good. you, Bill. Well, you're very Appreciate welcome, it. Brother James. I'm glad I could do this program, and I'm okay. sure everybody is very interested in this topic. Yeah.